Now, the last seat in the 32nd Dáil was finally filled at a count centre in Kina early on Thursday morning. Of the 158 elected TDs, 51 are new to the Dáil. We have three of those newcomers with us tonight. Will you please welcome Lisa Chambers TD, Donico O'Leary TD and jo Josepha Madigan TD. You're colour coordinated there. We did, yeah. We, we, did you ring each other before you? We did. We chatted before we did, the match. We were matching, yeah. 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 Uh, well, first of all, congratulations Thank to you, you all, uh, newly elected to the, to the Dáil. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, Lisa. Uh, 29 from Mayo and uh, elected as a councillor back in 2014. And this is my second time running for the Dáil, so newly elected TD for Fianna Fáil in Mayo. Right. Uh, Dunica? I'm 27. I'm from Talk around the south side of Cork City, uh, representing Cork South Central, first Sinn Féin TD, representing that constituency. Yeah, and you're 27? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Josefa? Now, how am I supposed to follow that, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> to two young people in their 20s. Uh, I'm in my mid-40s, Ray, I'll be honest with you, right. but a lady never tells her age. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, my mother will kill me if I say my real age. No, um, yes, I am in my mid-40s. I've been a councillor for Dunery Wet Down for the last two years, and I'm now Fianna Gael TD for Dublin Wet Down. OK. Josepha? Yes. It's an odd name. I've never met a Josepha before. <laughs> I haven't either, Ray, actually. Right. No, yeah. I haven't. Where does it um, come from? My, mother is, um, my mother's mother was actually Josephine, right. and it's a derivative from that. Right. So it's actually Joseph with an A. It's quite simple, really, when you know you know, how it's actually made up. Yes. So um, I always wished that I was called Mary when I was younger because people always said just Joseph or Joseph or Josepha, right. you know, non-stop, just everything. Um, but now, actually, as a politician, it's very useful because yeah. it is a conversation piece and people discuss my name and wonder about my name. So maybe, maybe it's not a bad thing after who, all. Who else is in the family? So I have my brother Patrick and then there are five girls. Josepha, Fenella, Vanora, Carlene, and Edwina. And my mother and father were our Patricia and Patrick. Right. So um, they had a great imagination. Yes. Mm. Patrick was the lucky one. He was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Dunica, wh why did you decide to go into politics? You're 27. Uh, I'd right, say a lot yeah. of your contemporaries have, have left the country, have they? Yeah, that's right. And, like, I mean, it's not just an issue that I suppose we talk a lot about how it's affected rural Ireland, but it's affected urban areas as well. I probably know more people in Perth in Western Australia than I do in most Irish counties. Um, and it's had a huge impact on our, on our community. Um, I suppose I decided to get involved in politics. I'm in Sinn Féin since I was 18. And I started to get very politically conscious when I was a teenager and growing up um, in Toker. And I suppose I recognised very early on that there was a huge inequalities. Other people, I never wanted for anything in my own life. Um, but other people in my community and neighbouring communities didn't have the same opportunities. And I can see that very clearly in terms of employment in terms of education, even in terms of housing and the condition of housing and overcrowding in terms of, uh, of housing. Um, and I suppose I felt that not enough people were making um, the case for these people, for these communities. Okay. And I felt Sinn Féin were the people who were a voice for these communities. And what about you, Lisa? Why did you get into politics? All, all of you are in law, are yes, you? Yes, yeah, yes. By coincidence, yeah. yeah. So you were a successful local solicitor. Barrister. Barrister, sorry, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Um, uh, so why politics? Um, I, suppose, I suppose politics nearly found me rather than the other way around and it was through a connection that was in, I mean, was in the Army Reserve and it was um, one of my friends through that that invited me to a meeting about seven years ago, a local Fianna Fáil common meeting and I just really enjoyed it and um, I ended up running then for the party at 24 for the general election in 2011. So it was a massive experience and that was kind of, I suppose, a crossroads in my life. You know, do I want to pursue this? Do I want to stick at this? Or do I want to go to Australia where I would planned to go? My friends were already there and I was due to join them when I'd finished in the King's Inns. So I made the choice, I stayed, and I think one of the main reasons I stayed is because I looked at politics and I thought, that doesn't represent me. Okay. I seen mainly men, um, nobody really my own age, and I thought that we didn't really have a voice, and I had an opportunity to maybe be that voice and, and be part of that. And I just felt that a lot of the issues that my generation are dealing with, such as not being able to get a stable job, buy their first home, start their family, all of the milestones that our parents reached at this age we're now pushing on five and ten years because we can't afford to do those things because it's a lot more difficult. And those issues aren't being debated on the national stage and I think that was the driving force behind it. So you were canvassing for the last election, 2011, was, yeah. at the age of 24. 24, yeah. When it was ABFF, anything but Fianna Fáil. <laughs> uh, 
that must have been hellish on the, on the doorsteps, was it? Well, I suppose I had nothing to compare it to. It was my first election. Oh, of course, yes. And um, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm tough anyways. I don't know. I, and I didn't find it that bad. I enjoyed it. It was really challenging. I learned a lot. And it was certainly, you know, in terms of being thrown in the deep end at that age, you know, I was very new to politics. I was only in the party about a year and a half. Um, I had been chair of the Common, but that was about it, you know, and it was my first real campaign. Yeah. So in terms of running a national campaign and canvassing and dealing with media. I mean, I used to go home at night. We'd be out canvassing until about 9 o'clock at night. I would go home then because I might have an interview the next morning. I would be debating politicians that were maybe 20 years um, in the job. And I was there studying at night to try and come up to speed. You know, I would have known our own policies, but I was there studying the manifestos of all the other parties and trying to get my head around all of this and then go into a radio station and debate somebody that's been doing it for 20 years. Mm. So I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot about, of fire. Yeah, I learned yeah. a lot about myself and yeah. what I was capable of. And I thought, you know, I, I can do this. I can, I can give it a go. Josefa, um, I, I was going to say you took a big scalp, but you, you deposed your fellow um, party man, Alan Shatter, in your constituency. Uh, was that awkward or were you talking to him afterwards? I was, of course, uh, Ray, and I gave my commiserations. You know, Alan is a, a colleague of mine, is a solicitor and a family lawyer as well, and, you know, was a, a fantastic legislator and parliamentarian and obviously wish him the best in his future career. Look, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a competition, you know, when you're on the ticket with somebody, mm. uh, who, particularly a former Minister for Justice. Um, but I'm absolutely delighted now that I'm there. Um, there's a lot that I want to do in the Dáil. Yeah. And, um, Before you, know, you get to that, because you were saying that he, he practiced family law as well, yes. so you have that in common. You have something else in common, because he published an erotic novel, and you published an erotic novel. <laughs> yeah. his, his, name, his, his one was called Laura. What was the name of your erotic novel? Mine was, a, I, well, I self-published it back in 2011. It was called Negligent Behaviour. Um, yeah. I've also written a family law book, so we have that in common I know, as I, well. didn't talk to you. I prefer to talk to you about the erotic novel. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. So, so um, was, it, was it about uh, a No, I, I mean, it's just a hobby of mine. And, uh, in fact, I've written another book, but it's in a drawer at the moment because I haven't had the time to edit it, right. you know. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it, I enjoy it and it's cathartic and it's, you know, it's a bit of fun, a bit of light relief. And did you ever compare and contrast yourself <laughs> and Alan? No, I no. no. I was going to get some advice from Geoffrey Archer there in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say give it to him. Yeah, I'd say you might. The advice. You might, you might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, behave, behave. <clears throat> How did the book do? Uh, which one? The, 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 the fiction book? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it, it did absolutely fine, you know. Yeah. Um, and the law book, look, was about mediation for separating and divorcing couples. It was the first work in Ireland. In fact, Alan Chatter actually launched it for me okay. four years ago. Right. Um, so that was my contribution. Uh, Donica, um, so when it comes to a new government, um, Sinn Féin have said that they're definitely not going to go into coalition, uh, happy to remain as opposition. Well, I wouldn't say happy. Like, I mean, I don't think we would relish uh, a Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael government, and I don't think the people who voted for us would relish it. Um, we've been dominated for the history of the state by parties, uh, governments led by centre-right parties. To have two of them together would be, and I'd be very fearful of the kind of policies that would be involved in that. But I suppose the mandate we looked, sought from the people was that we weren't going to go into government uh, unless we were the larger party in the coalition, and that's what we promised people. That's what we're going to stick to. Okay. What's going to happen, Lisa? So will there be this grand coalition that everyone's talking about between Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil? Um, I don't see it myself, but I mean, I'm one of 44 Fianna Fáil TDs. I'm one member of that team, so I can't speak for everybody. And it's the early days yet. We had our first meeting last Thursday, and we'll be meeting again this coming week to have that discussion. I, I know there are negotiations ongoing in the background between ourselves and the smaller parties like the Social Democrats, the Greens, the Independents and that. So um, I'll be getting an update you know, as a new deputy on Monday from the party leader. Yeah. But I mean our focus now is on, for, for, these, for this week and the next few days, our focus is on electing Michal Martin as Taoiseach next Thursday and we'll be putting him forward. What's your view though? What, what do you think will happen? Um, I suppose something that people might not know if you're not in Fianna Fáil, we have to ballot our members. If any, any, for any coalition, any possible coalition, we have to convene a special or that of our members and each member gets a vote. So, um, like I said, I only have one vote on that, and I'm not sure how our members would vote. I think it would be unlikely that they would vote to, for that coalition. Okay. But I can't speak for everybody, so I don't know. Have you held on to your posters? I have, yeah. Right. yeah Donica, um, have you held on to your posters? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Josefa? Yes, I yeah. have. Because I was listening yeah. to radio during the week, uh, Michael Leary, whether he said there'd be another election within a year. Alan Shatter said there'd be another election within 18 months. So a lot of people who know a lot of things are... 
I don't know how they know that. But, well, yeah, no, but, uh, yeah. but, yeah, but it, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think anybody knows, yeah. Ray, what's going to happen. And you, you, know, you were in a parliamentary party meeting for how long the other day? Yeah, I think it was, it was six or seven hours, you know, and it was really, it was my first uh, parliamentary party meeting and uh, it was, you know, a real privilege to be able to input there. Um, but, you know, we have to find common ground between the respective manifestos and see if we can move forward because there's no point, in my view, in establishing a government if it's only going to fall in a few months' time, you know? Yeah. We have to have some sort of stability. So I really hope that but we can look, in, like, find um, something. Your dad was a Fianna Fáil councillor, so you've been sort of both sides of the fence. Yeah. <laughs> can you see a time when Fianna Fáil, honestly, and Fianna Gael will get into a coalition? Yeah, look, you know... In that, a, yeah, that, was, that wasn't it, a, yeah, no, no. but <laughs> in an ideal world, uh, no. I mean, look, I, I'm very proud to be a member of Fianna Gael and, you know, the last time uh, John Bruton left in 1997, the Rainbow Coalition, he left, you know, a surplus in the budget and it's not in Fianna Gael's DNA to wreck the economy. Okay. So, look, you know, it's, it just remains to be seen what's going to happen right. at this stage. Um, Donica, a lot of talk about Gerry Adams and Bertie O'Hearn was on the, the radio during the week saying he thought that if uh, Gerry Adams wasn't the leader of Sinn Féin, that they would have got 10 more seats in the election. I'd be slow enough to take advice from Bertie Harnall. Say again? I'd be slow enough to take advice from Bertie <laughs> Harnall. Yeah. Yeah. But I suppose he does know politics. He yeah. does know politics. He, he does know politics, yeah. but I, he doesn't... I suppose, look, Gerry Adams is after leading Sinn Féin to its best ever general election results. Nine extra seats, new seats in constituencies. We've never won seats, such as my own in County Offaly. And that's following our best ever local election result and our best ever European election when result. When you were canvassing, was, did anybody talk to you about the IRA and Sinn Féin's connection with the IRA? Most people wanted to talk about the real issues in terms of housing, in terms of health. These are the things people want to talk about. But did anybody want to talk about the connection between Sinn Féin and the IRA? Look, I mean, there will always be hostile doors that people... And look, I mean, yeah. there are... I suppose the past is a difficult place, um, but I suppose... We were very much dealing with people in terms of housing, in terms yeah. of health, in terms of childcare, and that's why people vote for us. And one of the things you said earlier on is that p part of the reason you got into politics is to give people who don't have a voice a voice. And yeah. I suppose the people who are homeless don't really have a voice, and that's something you feel passionately about. Yeah, and I think we're dealing with now a housing crisis that's a, a result of 15, 20 years of neglect, of not building enough social housing, of not dealing with... Uh, the massive rising cost of rent that's a, a, a rising quicker in Cork than in Dublin at the minute um, and that's having a huge impact and it's not just in terms of people sleeping rough but it's also in terms of there's many many families that are totally overcrowded nine people in two rooms <coughs> yeah. all that kind of thing yeah, yeah. and those are difficult situations as well what, and that's what, homelessness what, what, too the, it must be frustrating though because you're going to be in op opposition what can you really do about something like that in opposition I think we've shown through our time that we have been in the Dáil what can be achieved in opposition okay. and holding governments to account. Some independents have also shown what can be achieved in opposition, but we're not, we're not looking to be in opposition forever. We have strong policies. We want to get into government. Okay. We want to actually achieve these things, and we've done that in the North. We will will the Jerry South. Adams ever be Taoiseach? Yes or no answer? I think he can be, yeah. Okay. Well, what's the, when, when you get into politics, what's the, the ultimate goal? You know, is it, for you, Lisa, what is it? Is it, what do you think about, now, be honest, in your quiet moments, is it to yeah. get a ministry or is it, to lead the party or what um, is it? You know, obviously I want to progress, but I want to be a good representative and I want to, at the end of my term, say I've met something better. That okay. by going in there, I've achieved something. And that might be something small, it might be something big, I don't know. Okay, but to come back then, out and say I've done that. something. Which, which uh, is more important? You serving your constituency or serving your country? You have to do both. Ah, yeah. No, but, but, does that but, mean but, it's, it's, it, you always say, ah, that's the answer, but that's the truth. Yeah. Like, you know, I was elected from Mayo. The people of Mayo voted for me, but I have a responsibility nationally to my country and to serve at a national level. But you have to be available in the constituency. We live in a very small country, yeah. and that's just how it works, unfortunately, for some people. I think it's good think to it actually have work, that connection. Do you think it could work better? It can definitely work better, but we're, in, we're a very small country. Yeah. It's two degrees of separation to, know, to, to you meet somebody that knows somebody that you know. And it, that makes it difficult. And I just think this idea that you could be removed from your constituency completely, I don't know if that's possible. Okay. Josefa? Yeah, you know... What's your I, ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to serve the people in whatever way I can yeah. and in whatever form that takes in the future. You know, I've been self-employed for 20 years, Ray. It's a big issue of mine. Childcare, I'm the only parent here on the couch, is a big issue of mine. Crime is a big issue. There are things I'm very passionate about and acting for separation, divorcing couples for 20 years. I know yeah. in the cold face what families are going through and what help they need. So I just want to bring the experience that I have uh, okay. with me and do the best I can. And Donica, 
What about you? Well, yeah, it's very, like, I want to solve my constituents and raise their issues, but I see myself as part of a team. And as part of a team, we're very ambitious for it. We want to change Ireland. We want to deliver universal health care. We want to deal with the housing crisis and make sure it never returns again. That's what we want to do. Um, are you not allowed to wear a tie for Sinn Féin? Is that the a tie? Is that part of the, you know, is that, is that, that's just personal choice or...? Yeah, well, I thought it was just more suitable here this evening. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, good luck to all three. Um, uh, I, I hope that you're not out knocking on doors within the next two years, but it looks very likely, doesn't it? Uh, Lisa Chambers, uh, Donica O'Leara and Josefa Madigan, thank you very much. Thank you.